Hello and welcome to PanKind's Empowered webinar, Finding Support Services. My name is Sophia Casbolt and I'm PanKind's Program Manager. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Now, I just have a little bit of housekeeping before we start. I need to let you know that the information presented in this webinar is of a general nature and should not be considered personal or medical advice. Always seek independent advice relevant to your specific situation. The opinions of the presenters are their own and do not necessarily reflect the views of PanKind. If you're experiencing any technical difficulties during the webinar, please let us know via the Q&A chat bar on the right or email me at sophia at pankind.org.au. A recording of the webinar will be available from our website, pankind.org.au, and only those presenting on screen will be in the recording. During this webinar, attendees' mics and cameras will be off. Now, 2020 has definitely been a challenging year, and for many of us, the lead up to the holidays can be particularly hard. This year, we have produced some additional resources to help you feel informed, and we hope that our webinars and Living with Pancreatic Cancer booklet have been valuable. Tonight, for the last webinar of the year, we wanted to share with you some of the incredible practical, financial, and emotional support services available and how you can access them. On that note, I'd like to extend a warm welcome to our presenters, Chelsea Upston from Cancer Council and Joe Marks from It's About Us. Chelsea worked clinically at Peter McCallum Cancer Centre for seven years, working predominantly on a medical oncology ward before moving to Darwin, where she was the Cancer Information and Support Services Coordinator for Cancer Council Northern Territory. She held this position for five years and in early 2017, Chelsea returned to Melbourne and worked as a clinical nurse specialist with 131120. Cancer Council's information and support line. Today, she is a team leader at 131120. Our second presenter, Jo Marks, co-founded It's About Us with her husband and medical oncologist, Associate Professor Gavin Marks. Jo works part-time as a strategic planner and the rest of her time developing It's About Us and looking after her family. Tonight, Chelsea will discuss the support and resources available via Cancer Council's 13 11 20 Cancer Nurse Line, and will also give us a brief overview of Cancer Council's emotional and practical support programs. Jo will then discuss the cathartic benefits of writing as therapy and share how It's About Us's unique template-based book enables you to document memories, feelings, emotions, and important messages in a beautiful and personalized way, and how the accompanying workshops are run. After each presentation, we'll have about five minutes or so for questions. So please send through your questions at any time via the Q&A chat bar on the right of your screen. And if a question comes through that you'd also like answered, you can upvote it in the chat. Please, um, sorry, to questions most relevant to today's topic or more general in nature will be prioritized. If you have questions specific to your circumstances, these are best directed to your healthcare team. Okay, now I'd like to hand over to our first presenter, Chelsea. Thanks, Chelsea. Thanks very much, Sophia. Um, hello, everyone. And um, a big thank you to Pankind and Sophia for inviting me to present at tonight's webinar. Uh, as Sophia said, I'm Chelsea and I'm a team leader and a nurse uh, on 131120, which is Cancer Council Victoria's information and support line. Next slide. Thanks, Sophia. I would also like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land we stand on today. And for me, it's the Boon Wurrung people of the Kulin Nation. I also pay my respects to their elders past and present and all Aboriginal people here today. Thanks, Sophia. By the end of this session, I hope that you'll have an understanding of the role of our experience 13, 11, 20 cancer nurses and health professionals as a resource to access cancer related advice, programs and support services. It's also important to be aware that I am a nurse with Cancer Council Victoria. I understand that I'm presenting to a national audience today, so I'll try to keep my presentation relative to everyone, but please be aware that not all services and programs are the same in each state or territory. And many of the examples I use will be Victorian based, but please know that the same or similar services and programs may be offered in your state or territory. Thanks, Sophia. So what do we do? 
Cancer Council is the only organisation in Australia working across every area of every cancer, from research and prevention to support and advocacy. As a federation, we operate in every state and territory, and we have three main pillars. So our first is cancer research. So Cancer Council is the largest independent funder of cancer research in the country. And each year, cancer councils across Australia invest more than $60 million in cancer research. This research is conducted at Cancer Council. And we also provide grants to universities, hospitals and research institutes to find better ways to prevent and treat all types of cancers. Under our prevention pillar, we know that around a third of cancers can be prevented through early screening and healthy lifestyle choices, which is why cancer prevention and screening is another key focus for us. Our work includes bowel, breast and cervical cancer screening education, plus our SunSmart, Quit Victoria and Live Lighter programs that educate people on how to reduce their cancer risk. Thanks, Sophia. Tonight, I'm going to talk uh, about um, our support pillar. So at Cancer Council, we believe that no one should face cancer alone. And to support individuals as well as their carers, family and friends, we have a special cancer information and support line on 13 11 20 and a variety of support programs. In one year alone, we can take up to just under 40,000 calls to 13 11 20, provide around 2,000 wigs and headwear, uh, more than $5 million worth of free legal and financial advice is provided. There are nearly 700 support groups, um, that's nationwide and almost 1 million booklets and publications are distributed. We also work in advocacy and engage with the community to change laws and policies to improve cancer care and outcomes. And some of the feedback that we're hearing from recent consultations with patients and health professionals are around the need to reduce the cost of cancer, improve coordinated care and provide equal and timely access to treatment. Uh, next slide, thanks Sophia. Um, okay, so Cancer Council 13 11 20 is a national service for all people affected by cancer and health professionals who support them, regardless of where they live in Australia. So 13 11 20 is staffed by experienced cancer nurses and health professionals and the lines open from 9am to 5pm Monday to Friday. There's a message bank service for after hours and calls are returned by a cancer nurse on the next business day. We also have an email and nurse service, which is answered within 48 business hours. The nurses and health professionals provide evidence-based, reliable and trusted information on cancer, emotional and practical support for people affected by cancer, their family, friends and the health professionals who support them. We also provide information on cancer prevention and provide general information on cancer-related issues. Importantly, we also provide support to carers and families at any point, including bereavement. We do not provide individual medical advice, only general information, and we're often referring back to the treating team in these instances. But we are able to provide guidance on questions to ask the medical team if required. The cancer nurses and health professionals on 13 11 20 are trained to listen and to refer to support services as required. These support services include both practical and emotional support and all calls and emails are confidential. Next slide, thanks Sophia. So many people from culturally and linguistically diverse backgrounds can experience a range of specific issues after a cancer diagnosis, including feelings of isolation and lack of understanding when it comes to medical instructions. People affected by cancer that speak a language other than English can still talk confidentially to a cancer council nurse or health professional with the help of an interpreter for the cost of a local call from landlines by calling 13 14 50. So with the help of an interpreter, the 13 11 20 nurse and or health professional can explain medical terms, procedures and treatments, provide written resources in the caller's language and put people in touch with others who've been through a similar experience using an interpreter if required. Next slide. The next few slides will provide you with a snapshot of different programs and support provided to those who call 13 11 20. Next slide. 
So one of Cancer Council Victoria's longest running support programs is Cancer Connect. And this is where people are matched with a trained volunteers been through the same or similar cancer and treatment of similar age, lifestyle and family circumstances. Conversations take place over the phone and the two people never meet. So because of this confidentiality and the fact that people are talking to someone who's been there before, Many people who use the program say that they feel comfortable sharing things that they wouldn't normally tell their friends or their family. So um, uh, examples of things that might be discussed include their fear of surgery, coping with um, the effect of menopause, effect on physical intimacy and other practical tips. And this Connect model is also applied to Family Connect, Gene Connect and Trial Connect. So Family Connect is for carers, usually family members, who do a tremendous amount of unpaid work, coordinating appointments, navigating the healthcare system, and looking after the physical and emotional needs of someone with cancer. We really understand that carers need care too, and Family Connects means that they can share experiences and coping techniques with someone who really does know what it's like. Gene Connect is for people who have discovered that they've got a higher likelihood of developing cancer due to their genetic makeup. Living with this situation can be very stressful and being able to talk through these issues with someone who's been through the same situation can be helpful. Trial Connect is, uh, this program connects people who are considering participation in a clinical trial with a trained volunteer who's been through at least one clinical trial. And the trained volunteer provides an opportunity to discuss concerns about participating in a trial, gain a better understanding of what to expect in a trial and have insight for the types of questions to ask about trial participation. Next slide. Uh, one of the things that people affected by cancer commonly report is that they feel very alone and isolated, like it's only happening to them. Uh, support groups are a great way to learn about living with cancer, increase your knowledge of what you're dealing with, and also to realise that other people are dealing with a similar situation. Sharing stories and experiences with others can be an effective way to learn practical tips and also to help people feel better equipped to face their cancer. So Cancer Council Victoria, for example, connects people with over 124 different support groups across the state and they all cater for different kinds of people. Some take place over the phone, some are internet based and some meet face to face. There are groups for different types of cancer, for um, people in the LGBTIQ community, for young adults, for carers, for Chinese, Greek and Italian speakers. Um, and please know that cancer support groups are certainly available um, nationwide. We help people in forming new groups when there's a need in the community and provide ongoing training to group leaders. All states and territories will be able to provide information on what support groups are available to people. Next slide. Cancer Council have an online community and this online community provides information and support in the form of forum communities for both patients and carers online blogs, as well as access to online support groups. And you can see here on this slide that um, the online community currently has 8,000, over almost 8,500 members um, and 5,292 forums and, and blogs. Next slide. Our transport to treatment service works with the local community and Cancer Council volunteers to help people get their treatment. So available, availability of this service varies around the country. Um, ACT, New South Wales, Queensland and Tasmania all have a transport to treatments program. Unfortunately, Cancer Council Victoria doesn't. However, if someone contacts us to ask about transport to treatment, we'd discuss potential options for them through local services or other support focused organisations. Next slide. Clinical trials are an important component of delivering gold standard care, but finding and speaking about clinical trials can be challenging. Cancer Council Victoria has an online and mobile search platform called the Victorian Cancer Trials Link, which can assist you in searching for available clinical trials in Victoria and provide a source of general information about clinical trials. It also allows users to search for clinical trials that are recruiting across Victoria, including at rural and regional clinical trials trial sites. 
And we're also able to provide information about how to find out more about clinical trials, their eligibility criteria, and where you can access trials in your state or territory. Cancer Council also has general information and resource about clinical trials. And we have a booklet called Understanding Clinical Trials and Research. Um, other resources include a set of videos which detail the experiences and advice of four people who have previously participated in a clinical trial. And as previously mentioned, the Trial Connect is also available as a peer-to-peer -peer support program. And look, if you're interested in um, finding out more about clinical trials, certainly we encourage you to speak to your treating team, but I would definitely encourage you to call 13 11 20 because your specific cancer cancel will be able to direct you to the right um, resources or website for your state or territory. Uh, next slide, please. So cancer education programs are group programs that are delivered by health professionals working with cancer patients, carers and survivors. And the health professionals are trained as program facilitators by Cancer Council staff and supported by their health service. The majority of Cancer Council's states and territories have cancer education programs. And some examples of these include a living with can cancer education program, which is for people that um, are recently diagnosed and receiving treatment. And this um, program builds resilience, develops communications and enables participants to connect with others. There's also a cancer wellness program. So for those who've completed their primary treatment or receiving ongoing treatment. And this program provides information and strategies for improved health and wellbeing as people move from the treatment phase to recovery. And there's also an option for health services to run eight week programs involving an hour of exercises and an hour of education per week. So for example, in 2019 in Victoria, there were 82 cancer edu education programs that were delivered to 880 participants. Next slide, please. Thanks. So due to the financial um, hardship cancer places on families, um, it can be extremely difficult to afford a holiday when it's needed most. So Cancer Cancel Victoria have a holiday break program which provides families with a short break away at no cost so they can share quality time with loved ones away from the hectic schedule of appointments and cancer treatments. So clients need to have a diagnosis confirmed by the referral form for the referral to proceed. Transport costs aren't included and breaks are for patients currently undergoing treatment within 18 months of completion of treatment. Uh, and for some, it may be one of the few opportunities to spend valuable time together with family and friends providing lasting memories. There is a new addition to this holiday break program where um, we're providing an opportunity for Aboriginal people to be on their traditional country with a spiritual connection to the land and waters, a fundamental part of Aboriginal culture. This program helps those who are affected by cancer to spend quality time where their ancestors are. We know, um, we understand that being on country brings calm feelings of belonging and revitalizes. Uh, this link to holiday programs with traditional countries has a greater meaning and adds greater value for Aboriginal people. Now, just this is an, a service that we need to be mindful is not available in all states and territories. Next slide, please. So Cancer Cancel offer a free wig service thanks to the generous support of the community and it's available to people experiencing hair loss due to cancer treatment and is designed for those who not able to afford to pay for a wig themselves. So in Victoria, due to COVID-19, our wig service is currently being operated as a postal service, whereby we mail out a wig and a headscarf or cotton cap, together with information about caring for the wig and styling headwear, and further information, including a selection of videos to assist with styling headwear can be found on the website. It's important to note that SA and New South Wales don't have a wig service that's run in-house, but they're able to provide information about where to go to access a wig. Next slide. Uh, so with regards to our financial assistance program, so um, this varies again from state to state or territory, but 
Some provide one-off grants available to people with a medically verified cancer diagnosis requiring active or supportive treatment. For people who are struggling financially and those needing financial assistance but are ineligible for alternative government relief schemes or whose needs are unmet by those schemes. Other cancer councils provide financial counselling and information about financial supports available instead of the one-off grants. Next slide. So our, we've got a what's called a pro bono service, which is there's four pro bono programs that are available for those experiencing financial hardship as the result of their cancer diagnosis. And these are the legal referral service, the financial planning referral service, the workplace advice service and the small business advice service. And this is delivered by professionals in the community who volunteer their time to assist clients who can't afford to pay for advice. Cancer Council matches clients to appropriate service providers. So some examples of the services provided under the pro bono programs are um, wills, powers of attorney and enduring guardianship, early access to superannuation and life insurance benefits, consumer credit, including mortgage hardship, and small business advice. Um, so estate planning, so for example, making a will, power of attorney, should actually be addressed at an early stage, but often these conversations don't happen until much later. Uh, for this, for the pro bono programs, it's also just important to point out that it's a means tested service, this one. Next slide, please. So um, here's just a few little quotes from people that have used the 13, 11, 20 service and our support services. Um, and you can just have a little read of those. But I also just wanted to mention a couple of other services that I've not had a slide on in this presentation. They also vary from state to state or territory. So these include cancer counselling. So for example, in Victoria, we provide a short term based counselling service for people that can't afford the cost of counselling or if they're unable to access this through their treatment centre or their local community. Some cancer councils also have accommodation available for when people are needing accommodation close to their treatment centre and this accommodation might be at a reduced rate or at no cost. Um, unfortunately not a service that all cancer councils have. And all of Cancer Council services and um, programs can be discussed in much greater detail with um, the nurse or health professional that you'll speak to if you call 13 11 20. Next slide. So we've now talked about the services provided by Cancer Council and I'm just going to spend some time considering a case scenario. So let's talk about Alex. Thanks, Sophia. Next slide. So Alex is 65 years old. Um, they live in a small regional town. They've recently been diagnosed with pancreatic cancer, feeling overwhelmed and distressed, and calls 13 11 20 in the hope that someone can just make sense of it all. Alex has recently be, been diagnosed with um, as I said, pancreatic cancer, and they were referred to 13 11 20 by, might have been a nurse or social worker, might have been a friend. So they rang and they've, they're speaking to one of the nurses. So next slide, please. So 13 11 20 nurses may speak to Alex about, um, and I've just, I'll just run through. So information, so for example, written information that we can send to them about their cancer. And if they're wanting information, um, about um, you know their treatment as well, we're certainly able to do that. So we might send the Understanding Pancreatic Cancer booklet and also our What to Expect guide. They might have been told about the type of treatment that they're having and may want to speak about what some of the common side effects are, what to expect with treatment and any issues that they might expect to experience with the treatment. So we might also send um, the Understanding Chemotherapy or the Understanding Surgery booklet as well, depending what their treatment it will involve. With regards to emotional support, Alex uh, feeling emotionally isolated. Um, they might have a change in their physical appearance due to treatment or other factors, and they might have a partner. And so what does this mean for them? 
They may also speak about the type of support that they um, have in terms of their emotional support and how they're coping or managing with their diagnosis. Do they have any supports of, of friends or family? Do they feel that they could speak to those people about their concerns? As they live in a small regional town, if there's a support group in their area, are they comfortable in attending? Do they feel that they need some psychological support? So, you know, um, some counselling or um, a visit with a professional psychologist and are they able to access this in their local area? They might be able to access a telephone-based counselling service through Cancer Council. With regards to practical issues, are they working? Will they need to give this up while they're receiving treatment? Do they have any sickness benefits that they can access? Cancer Council's financial assistance grant or our financial counselling might be discussed and transport to treatment may also be discussed with regards to options for getting to and from chemotherapy appointments. So with regards to family issues, if this person has grandchildren, it might be a concern for them about how to talk to, a grand, talk to their grandchildren. Um, and so we've got a booklet called Talking to Kids About Cancer that might benefit Alex and the impact on the family. So we're unsure from this case study, is this person in a relationship or do they have family support? We might speak to them about change in role in the family and may go from being, they may go from being the main carer to being the person that requires to be cared for. So the changes in family dynamics will be discussed as well. So just with regards to the outcomes for Alex, which is the next slide, thanks Sophia. There might be many different outcomes. So as I mentioned, the sending of the, the resources, um, referrals to any of the Cancer Council services, whether it be financial assistance program, Cancer Connect, Cancer Counselling, Transport to Treatment. And we'll also offer a follow-up call as well just to check in. So we don't case manage, but sometimes it's good just to check in um, down the track just to reiterate some of the information or just see how the referrals are progressing. It also gives Alex a little bit more um, of a chance to ask questions as well. Next slide. So this slide's probably more directed for health professionals referring their patients to 13, 11, 20. However, I just wanted to keep it in because I think it's quite a relevant, uh, quite relevant in this setting as evidence suggests patients and carers should be directed to good sources of information between their hospital visits. And we also know that people prefer to use a variety of communication channels, so internet, telephone, face-to-face, -to, -face, to ask questions about cancer. And Cancer Council is able to provide all of these channels. We also know that it's just as important for carers to be given support and information as they have higher, well, they have high levels of unmet needs. Next slide. So now I'm just going to talk about some of the resources that we have available for all people affected by cancer. Next slide. So Cancer Council has more than 100 booklets and fact sheets on all types of cancers and for carers and the general public. We also have a broad range of information for carers and members of the community. And all of our resources are free to the public and healthcare providers and can be ordered on our website or by calling 13 11 20. So for a caller such as Alex, booklets on managing emotions as well as pancreatic cancer would be sent to them along with any other material that was de deemed relevant during the, the conversation. Next slide. Um, so this is just to let you know that there are several of our resources that have been translated into other languages and these can be accessed online. Um, but certainly we also with discussing with the nurse or the health professional in 13, 11, 20, they'll be able to point you in the right direction. Next slide. So Cancer Council Victoria also plays a key role in developing the range of optimal care pathway resources for health professionals and people affected by cancer. And these guides give optimal timeframes for tests and procedures, and they include a checklist with indicators and help people to communicate with their healthcare professionals and treating teams. And all guides can are available at um, the website, www.cancerpathways.org.au. Um, and next slide. Thanks, Sophia. So is there any questions at all? This is amazing, very comprehensive, thank you. 
Um, does anyone have any questions at all for Chelsea? All right, well, I might, I might just ask one real quick. So I just want to um, reiterate, so that 13, 11, 20 number, that's available to everybody all over the country. Um, Absolutely. They will help refer to any services in your local area as well. Is that right? Absolutely, yeah. So it's a, it's a nationwide service. Um, in Can Cancer Council Victoria, it's staffed by all cancer nurses, um, but throughout Australia, um, it, it's it's different for each state or territory, but certainly nurses are in the majority of states, but also health professionals are on the line as well, um, but very experienced people that have worked in the cancer sector. Yeah, oh, that's fantastic. And I do, I do have a, a question for you. Um, well, someone just had a comment to say thank you. Um, and somebody else has asked uh, where Cancer Council gets the funding from. Yeah, so um, the majority of our funding certainly comes from the community. So community funded things like our daffodil, things that you might be aware of, Daffodil Day, Real A for Life, um, our Australia's Biggest Morning Tea, um, those are kind of the, the big ones there, which um, I'm sure you can appreciate it. It's been a very difficult year for our fundraising, um, certainly here in Cats Council Victoria. Um, but also there are some government grants and things as well that Cancer Council is um, always applying for. So we there is a, a component of our funding that does come from, from government and government grants. Great, thanks, Chelsea. And we just have one more question. Somebody asking a little bit more about financial support. Um, so, if they're looking uh, for more information, what, what would you suggest? Do you think for in terms of the financial support you provide? Yeah, absolutely. So we do have firstly a really good booklet called um, Cancer and Your Finances, which can be found online on the Cancer Cancer websites. Um, however, I would strongly encourage you to call 13 11 20 if you can um, and, and just ask about what sort of supports and things might be uh, available to you, just explaining your situation and whether it's a, a grant or um, whether it's financial counselling, whether it's some financial financial planning, um, putting you in touch with a financial planner in potentially your local area. Um, yeah, I think it's quite dependent on your specific situation. We'd have a much more tailored discussion with you if you gave us a call. Yeah, that's great. And the, is Cancer Council able to advise on the sort of financial programs available through things like um, Centrelink or the government, that kind of thing? Um, we, so I can really only speak for Cancer Council Victoria in this, we're often referring back to the social worker at the treatment centre. We can certainly talk to them about whether they've accessed um, Centrelink, where we can't fill out their forms or anything like that for them, but we might be able to provide a little bit more advice and guidance as to how to go about applying for that. That's brilliant. Thank you so much, Chelsea. Um, and I think we will um, leave the questions there for now, but thank you everyone who asked questions. And uh, yeah, I'd like um, to now hand over to Jo. Um, I'll just get your slides up, Jo. Hi, Joe. Just waiting for your camera to show up. Can you hear us all right there? Well, just while we're waiting for Joe 
Joe to um, pop on camera. Uh, thank you to everybody who's sending questions. And um, Chelsea, there's lots of love for your presentation. So thank you again. Uh, there we go. Hi, Joe. Hi. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear okay. you. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Well, I'll, uh, I'll hand over to you now. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you so much, Sophia and um, Hankind, for inviting me to talk at um, today's webinar. Um, and thank you, everyone who is tuning in and watching from home, uh, giving up your time. I'm not sure if anyone who is um, listening tonight has heard about It's About Us. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about um, who we are, what we do, and um, specifically some of the ways in which we can try and um, let you get some support through our specifically designed tool. So we're a not-for-profit charity and um, actually almost to the day, um, five years ago we launched, and really what we wanted to do is we wanted to develop a digital scrapbook, a method of documenting and writing via a tool for anyone affected um, by cancer. And we mean anyone with any type of cancer or a family member or a carer or someone who has, um, you know, had something to do with cancer and they would like to actually use this tool to try and work through their emotional and their psychological state using writing as therapy. Our digital book, which I'll go through how it works and how you can get it and what we do, is absolutely free. And then if you wanted to print a copy of your book, it's subsidised. So it's very um, affordable and it's not cost prohibitive. Okay, so in essence, what we wanted to do is we wanted to create a way for you to capture and um, treasure and put down any precious memories, thoughts, insights, feelings or emotions. And um, what, how this all came about in terms of our why and why we developed it is um, Sophia did mention that my husband is a medical oncologist and he was asked um, quite frequently by patients, you know, where can I put my thoughts down? I've got so much. Some of them are avid bloggers, some of them are writers, some of them are just going through um, a lot of things and they really wanted somewhere where they could actually document what was important, what was meaningful and what they were going through while they were dealing with this cancer experience. We just really wanted to try and do something that would make their lives just a little bit easier. So we came up with this idea about creating a template where you could write a book and I think it's so important, you know, cancer and its diagnosis, and we, we all know someone, unfortunately, who has been affected by cancer, um, understands that it has a huge ripple effect. It's not just the patient, it's their workplace, it's their community, it's their family, it's their friends, and it, it, it is a time of heightened emotion, there's a lot of anxiety, there's a lot of fear, there's a lot of confusion. And it has been shown that there are many different ways and many different types of activities that will have a benefit on a patient's emotional and psychological well-being and looking after treating the whole person. We get such wonderful, we're so fortunate to have the medical care that we have in Australia. And um, it's really important to also look as um, as we deal with this cancer experience and other complementary things that might actually tap into some of these um, emotional states. Um, so some people, for example, just to ground themselves, to reset themselves, to try and cope, might do yoga, they might do music therapy. Um, a lot of hospitals that I've worked at have had an amazing art therapy session, um, exercise, you know, just going for walks or gardening or nature touching nature, seeing the ocean or things like that can help. But it's also been proven that um, writing is another way that you can actually, it's another type of therapy that actually might help people um, during this kind of state. So there are so many reasons why you might write a book and all of them are correct. There's no wrong or right reason. And every single person's reason is different. It might be that you're you know, keeping on board quite a lot of emotions and you don't really want to tell your family members, you don't really want to feel like you're burdening your friends and sometimes just writing it down, just journaling and 
processing that can be of help. Um, a lot of people have said they've written a book because whilst this is, you know, a very difficult time to go through, there have been a few moments that they've really, really realised some positive things to come out of this experience. And that could be just support, um, the care that's been shown, um, the acts of kindness, whether it's picking up kids, walking the dogs, meal services, and just feeling that love. For some people, it's post-treatment when they decide to maybe do an It's About Us book. And they're sort of like gone through that ritual and the doctor's appointments and they're sort of feeling a little bit lost and they want to close that chapter, put it behind them and move on. For some, it's just uh, a really good way to see how far they've come. And I've had people who've written books 5, 10, 20 years on from treatment. But really, whatever you want to say, whatever you find important and meaningful and whatever message you'd like to put out there. Okay, so it is, as I mentioned, um, been shown that communicating how you're feeling and writing down those is a very cathartic way of dealing with emotion and does help release a range of emotions. And you'll find that they're not mutually exclusive. You'll go through highs, lows, anger, frustration, gratitude, all in one day, uh, and that's okay. And also, as I mentioned before, just documenting what you've been through and how far you've come, when you go back and read it over time, is, is really, really valuable. Another reason that people choose to write a book is it's often a way to um, say things that go unsaid. We have um, a page in our book, which is a template, and we suggest that someone else writes um, this page in your book. You may offer it to a parent, a child, a partner, um, anyone who is, you know, um, of a support in your network. Um, we have a lady whose husband wrote the most beautiful letter and she said, you know, Joe, I always, always knew that he felt like that, but, but I don't think he ever would have said it. So there really is um, a lot of value in doing that. Um, in the end, if you choose to do our tool and use it, what you'll end up with is your own completely unique personalized digital photo book. I'm just going to share a small video that gives you a snapshot of what I'm talking about. It's, it's about us. It's for anyone, anyone affected by cancer. By cancer. Any, Any family, family friends, friends, patients, patients who, who can actually create, create a beautiful digital, digital scrapbook, scrapbook that they'll, they'll have forever. forever. It gives, it gives you a, a, a way, way of putting, putting all of those life stories, life stories together. It also, it also enables you to, you to um, publish, publish photos along with those memories, memories that, that you've got. got. When, when people, people are crystal clear, clear about, about what's important to them, it gives them an opportunity to actually put that to paper, paper and document that. that. Um, um, I think it's very valuable. Each, Each page, page offers, offers up thought starters, starters about, about what, what you may want, want to write. write. It, it gives, gives you ideas and suggestions and sentences to start a conversation. Often when people are going through treatment, they feel quite isolated and feel that other people don't really understand or get it. It's writing and journaling that can be done as a cathartic exercise. So it's also um, about leaving a legacy. There are some people who, um, there are some people who would like to um, document things that will be there forever. The things that are really, really important to them that they would like to, um, to share and they would. Hear you right now. <laughs> Thank you so much. Sorry, I didn't mean to. Yeah, hear you now. Thank. So what I was saying is, you know, often people will share letters. They'll write about their values, their beliefs, their home, their hopes and dreams. They'll write letters to members of their family, and as I mentioned before, we'll ask people to contribute towards their story. Um, we wanted to 
fill a gap that we felt was there. This concept was inspired by patients who came and asked, where could I, you know, document and create something that's really meaningful to me? And there wasn't a tool. The reason we developed it is um, we wanted to go digital and we wanted to do something that would be relevant to everybody. We didn't want something that you could just um, have pages of templates and if you didn't have surgery what do you do do you tear the page out if you don't have a partner if you don't have children what do you do on those pages so the whole point of going digital was to make it unique it's able to be completely customized um, we also really realized that it's quite a difficult thing to do to sit down and actually think about what you might want to say so we actually developed a template which has 25 pages and they all are individual thought starters. That way they might trigger things that you find meaningful, they might resonate with you and you can pick and choose, but at least you've got a bit of a form and a bit of a guide to get you started. I'll show you now through the running of this video how the software works. So you basically go to our website and you download it. It's through Memento, they're a photo book company. The It's About Us template is what you use. And when you open up, you'll find 25 beautifully designed pages. And each one has different thought starters. So about memories, changes, encouragement, everyday things, milestones, reflections. So it gives you like a really good guide. Once you've uploaded your pictures, you just drag and drop. We partnered with Memento because they're a photo book company and their software is so intuitive. We also created picture-based areas and text. So if you have a Word document, which is how we suggest you actually start writing your book, you just copy the bit that you would like to put into the book at that page, just do a copy and a paste, and it will go directly into the Word, um, the Word area that has been highlighted. So I just illustrate that for you now. You just double click on the on the text box, and then once you've copied over your document, you press paste, and the text is inserted. So you've got images and text. And the reason we suggest you use those word um, documents is we just don't have spell check because it is a photo book. We have um, what we call a digital scrapbook. We have all these different backgrounds and you can just drag and drop. If you don't like the one we've chosen, you can just go through all of our beautiful designs and just drop them in and make them very unique to yourself. The other thing is all the pages might not be things that you particularly want to say. So the, the things about the first one's about the diagnosis, you can delete that page. The second page is about the treatment. You might not want to talk about your treatment. You can just delete the page. Alternatively, you can add another page. And if you go to our layouts, you can just drag across the page that you want to include. And just have a, have a play because you can't actually go wrong. There's an undo button. It's very easy to use and it's very intuitive. So once you've got your pages, you basically can add any embellishments that you like. We've got a whole range there. So if, if about changes, you wanted to add a little um, image, we've got Believe coming up. So I just drag that over, reduce it, and move it to the section where I'd like it to go. And then I'll go back to my little photos. And I, as easy as that, just drop in the photos that are relevant for that page, and then add my text. And then that page is done. So as I mentioned, um, the book itself, if you do the digital book, what you see in front of you, you can um, house that on your computer and you can email it to anyone. It's a soft copy. It's there forever. It will never get burnt or scratched or damaged or torn. And then if you'd like to print a hard copy, you can go to um, Memento and they subsidize them. So it will be at a 50% discount. Um, so it's really cost effective. We mentioned the thought starters, so we give you this document as well, and these are the text boxes that are in each page of the book, and it will just give you ideas on what you may wish to write about. So encouragement, about your changes, um, it may be about reflections, so in the reflections page we've got, you may wish to write about things you've learned, things you've appreciated, what you were scared of, challenges, um, people who surprised me, people who made a difference. So we've given you so much content through all the research that we've done with doctors and nurses, psychologists, grief counsellors, to say what could we put in this book. 
these are just a few pages of books that people have um, generously shared who've done the workshops. Your books are completely private. She wrote about her child the first time she felt a kick when she knew she was pregnant, um, about the everyday things, just things that you managed to achieve, which are fantastic milestones. Um, but your book is completely private. It sits on your desktop in an application and you just load it up for print. No one has access to it. No one can see it unless you choose to share it with us. Um, people have put in letters and cards that people have written and um, those are messages that she got on Facebook and Instagram of support. So it's just so varied. You can do whatever you want. It's really only limited by your imagination. We've had books just about gratitude. We've had books about thanks. Someone has actually done a page for every single person she'd like to thank. So she's thanked her doctors, her nurses, her friends, her family, the um, school who did the rosters, the little sea store who left milk and bread um, across the road at her front door every day. So it's really, really up to you. And the last thing that I wanted to share with you is when we launched the charity, um, we just developed the tool which you saw which is online and we held seminars at um, hospitals and um, support groups all across Sydney and we have some we have done some in Victoria and then we were fortunate enough last year in May to win a grant um, through a program called um, Real Heroes and through that grant, we were able to launch something we've wanted to do for a long time, which is the Writing as Therapy workshops. So these have been going about a year and a half. And you can do a workshop. They're completely free, as is all our software. We're a not-for-profit. We are all um, volunteers. No one gets a salary. And we do not um, generate any income from this project at all. Now, the workshops are a great way to actually get a guided tour through how to create your book so you're not doing it independently at home. With COVID, we have actually done all our workshops online and that's been amazing. We had to pivot, we had to switch. It wasn't safe for people to come into hospitals and no one was allowed out. So we just do them all via Zoom. And we've had people from Victoria, we've had people in regional centres that we weren't able to reach before. So for us, it's actually been wonderful and we're still doing them online. I'll just tell you how it works. Um, so what we've done is we've created a really warm, safe and inclusive environment. And we have a five week writing as therapy workshop to actually take you through how to use the tool. The workshop format works as follows. So we do a two hour session every day for five weeks. At the moment, uh, the last ones were Tuesday, 10 till 12. The month before they were Wednesdays, 10 to 12, they just vary, but they're in the morning and you just log in every week for five weeks for those two hours. We do small groups, only 10, so that everybody um, has a lot of um, chance to participate and they're small and they're inclusive and um, we can get through everything together. We have a guest speaker, professional guest speaker at every session and through the funding from Lang and Simmons, we actually are able to provide you with a voucher to print your book. So we give you a $50 voucher, which will equate to $100 retail because you get the discount. If you are interested, once I've explained a little bit more about the workshops, you just go to our um, social media. So either our website, it's about us.com.au or our Instagram or Facebook, and you can just register. If there are full, so our next ones are open for February, there's an opportunity to wait list. And as soon as a new session comes up, we will email and contact you to say, come aboard. So the first session is all about why you might want to write a book. So what we do is we talk about how it helps you process, it could inspire others, it's used a reflection tool or as a legacy. And we go through lots of different examples. We have printed books and I share them online, the digital versions. We talk about examples of what people have done, themes, ideas, what it could look like. And we have two patients who've done who've done books um, and they share with you why they did their books, why they found it helpful, um, what their books are used for and just their perspective. And by the end of the first week, you'll have a list and a framework for your book structure and an idea of what it could look like. 
Session two is the fun stuff, we get technical. So I share my computer screen and I take you through how to download the software, very similar to the little video I showed you, how to upload photos, how to change the background, how to delete a page, add a page, just the basic technology, which is really easy to use and very, very intuitive. It's an interactive session. And at the end of that, you're really familiar and comfortable with the software. We have um, a sleep coach, a professional sleep coach, who will give you tips on strategies with regard to fatigue and sleep and what happens if you wake up. She also supplies information and an actual meditation that you can play to help fall asleep or relaxation meditation. So it's a wealth of information. Um, session three is all about what I want to say. So you've thought about your book, what it could look like. You've been inspired by other books. You've got the technology down pat. So you know how to use the program. Then comes the hard part. So you're sitting there thinking, okay, what am I actually going to say? This workshop will take you through a whole lot of strategies. We, we use quotes. We use um, our strategic thought starters. We use um, photo references. We use a whole range of different strategy and mind maps to teach you how to start writing. And then on the other side, if you've got too much writing, so if you've already got a whole lot of content and you need to prioritise and you need to actually um, distill some of that, we teach you how to do that as well. And then we have a professional um, oncology psychologist who talks about, you know, this type of writing may raise some emotions, it might bring back some memories, how to deal with that, how to cope with strategies, how to look after your mental well-being. So at the end of session three, you'll definitely have one to two completed pages of your book. Session four is all about the timing. So how do we, after we leave each other in the workshops, because we see each other for five weeks and then there's no one there every Tuesday morning saying, have you done this? How are you going? There's no email reminders. How do you keep that continuity? How do you keep going? So we give you a few more formatting tools and tricks, but we also show you how to allocate time, how to get support, how to follow up. And we have a dietitian who specializes again in oncology, talking about um, you know, dealing with loss of taste, um, dealing with healthy diet, um, looking after what we feed our bodies from the inside out, nausea, things like that. So she's fantastic. And then session five is consolidation. So just reviewing everything that we've done in a recap of, you know, how far we've come, going over everything, advanced formatting. So in the beginning in session two, I really talk you through um, the need to know. So how do you do the basics? And the nice to know comes in now. So this is changing the opacity of the background, like how, you know, how bright it is or how pale it is it's cropping photos it's rotating photos it's all the more tricky things that you know people like to know about and then we have an exercise physiologist who is also um, specializing in cancer care talking about exercise and tips and things that you can do to keep your body moving and believe it or not by the end of the five weeks you will definitely have a minimum of two to five pages so it just gives you that little kick start that you're guided, that you feel comfortable, you've met great people, you've heard from really good professionals and you're on the way to starting your book, which I understand is a very daunting um, process on your own. So one of the things I wanted to share before I wrap up is that, you know, doing this job, we have the privilege of meeting real heroes. You know, they're going through a lot of physical and emotional pain and, and it's not easy but they continue to engage us in the workshops, they inspire us, um, they give to each other, they share, and they seem so grateful. We also wanted to thank Lang and Simmons who were fortunate enough to actually give us this grant so we could do the workshops and continue to try and make a difference to the lives of so many. Um, but don't take it from me, I have um, three testimonials, two from recent online workshops, and one from a workshop that we did face-to-face -face early in the year. And I thought I'd just share their feedback with you. October, October and November this year, year I participated in the It's About, it's about Us, us writing, writing as Therapy, therapy workshop. workshop. Um, the experience was fantastic. I thoroughly recommend it. 
it was so much more than I expected. It's more than writing about this part of your life story and giving you the tools to do that. They also brought in specialists and gave talks on um, how to improve sleep, diet, exercise, living with cancer. It was brilliant um, and I loved it and I can't recommend it highly enough. You won't be disappointed. Thanks, Ajay. Can we cue the next video? Great. Hi, my, my name is Ranji. It's, it was in August this year that I heard of It's About Us. I had just completed my first line therapy for ovarian cancer and my cancer support group gave me, sent me information on this program offered for free to cancer sufferers and survivors using writing as therapy. Uh, this was a flexible program that gave me a framework and support to put my memories and stories together to share with my loved ones and friends. We were taught how to use Memento software and tips and tricks to personalize our photo book, all facilitated by Joe, who was excellent at this. There were also presentations by experts on nutrition, exercise and wellness, which I found very useful. I thoroughly enjoyed participating in the program and it was great to share my experiences and bond with other participants of the program. I got a lot out of it and would highly recommend it for people in a similar situation. Thank, Thank you. you. My name's Janet. I was invited to come and do these amazing books um, to see if that would work for me. I've had some recent um, serious diagnosis with my health and I thought what a great way to leave a memory of me for my kids and their kids, which um, I don't have any grandchildren yet, but there might be a book about granny that my kids can actually enjoy and talk to their kids about me. So it's leaving a memory of me behind. And thank you, Jo, for helping us. That has been remarkable. So in a nutshell, that is who we are and what we do. We just wanted to share that this tool is out there and it is accessible to anyone in Australia. If you would like to know more, um, you can email us at info at and please join our community. We are on Facebook and Instagram because then you'll be able to find out when our workshops come up and our support days come up and join in if it's something that you think um, you may be interested, if it would resonate with you, then we'd love you to um, create an It's About Us book. Thank you so much. And um, we've just had somebody come through and say thank you so much for your caring attitude. Does anybody else have any questions that they'd like to ask Jo? We'll just give it a second because I know it can be. Oh, no, there's a lot to get through. I'm <laughs> aware of our time, so I hope I didn't just rush through it. I just wanted to give you a snapshot. <laughs> no, it was it was wonderful. Thank you so much for going through it, and um, it's incredible how much. Uh, information and um, sort of prompting there is in those templates. They look incredible and really beautiful as well. Oh, thank you. And they're free on our website. You can download them. So oh, amazing. Have a look. There's a PDF that you can use, um, but we do we do send out to all our participants. When we were face-to-face, -face, they got beautiful gift bags, but now we just send them out in the post. So we send you the, um, we send you the whole of the templates in hard copy and there's a few little surprises some beautiful skincare that we've been given pro bono and just a whole lot of goodies little book to write down all your thoughts when you're thinking of content for your book so 
So um, oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, and it's uh, it is true. Everything's had to sort of shift a little bit this year, but it sounds like it's um, even brought more people in from regional areas, which is fantastic. I think it's been better, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, and we do have a six week follow up. So okay, we have like a little reunion. It's usually. When we do them in hospitals, we provide lunch and it's face to face, um, but we still do it online and, and everyone really looks forward to it. Oh, that's lovely. Well, thank you so much, Joe. We might leave it there for now, just in, in the view of time. But um, I did want to say a huge thank you to both Ch Chelsea and Joe for presenting tonight. And thank you, everybody else who's attended. It's been really incredible to hear about all the support programs available out there. And um, I, I hope that everyone can access them if they, if they choose to do so. Um, I also just wanted to say, if there's anything else you have questions about or you want to know more about, please feel free to email us as well at info at pankind.org.au. And I also wish you all the very best for the rest of your summer. And I hope to see you again in our next webinars in 2021. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you. Thanks. Good night. Bye.